Guys, the 2028 Olympics in Los Angeles is such a big topic at the moment when it comes to both Archer Aviation and Joby Aviation. You know I've been calling Archer to announce this. And you can see from my last video, before this was announced, I was showing my frustration that they didn't announce this in the earnings call. But here's the thing. It's good for Archer, but what does this mean for Joby? And which one's going to be the safer bet going into 2028 Olympics. Guys, you're probably sick of hearing me ramble on about Los Angeles and the Olympics in 2028. I've been so bullish on the 2026, 2027 and 2028 targets for three different events. They were the World Cup, the Super Bowl and then the Olympics themselves. But I've never really discussed where this leaves Joby in the equation. I'm going to explain to you what my feelings are about both Archer and Joby going into this explosive phase of growth and where my head's at. I really need engagement in this because I'm really on the fence between the two at the moment. And I'm going to explain in this video why I won't be diving head first into any rash decisions over the next few weeks. But before we get into it, make sure to bang that subscribe button because me and Reese have actually been speaking about something. Why don't we start streaming a live stream on Archer, a live stream on Joby, and then still have our eVTOL Weekly? It'd be very interesting because I find sometimes our eVTOL Weeklies, we can get too bogged down in one or the other. And I have not forgot about Vertical Aerospace. We are getting that interview and we're going to start covering vertical aerospace more and more every day. So without further ado, let's jump straight across to the press release. So I'm sure a lot of you have already heard that Archer is selected as the official air taxi provider for the LA 2028 Olympic and Paralympic Games, and also the sponsor of Team USA. And it's an exclusive only deal, so it's only Archer being involved in this. We're going to discuss what implications that has on Joby in Los Angeles later on in this video. But first I want to break down that it was announced that Archer was selected as the official air taxi provider for the 2028 Olympic and Paralympic Games and Team USA. The two will look to integrate Archer's midnight eVTOL aircraft across LA 2028 Games in a variety of ways, such as transporting VIPs and fans and also stakeholders, while also electrifying vertical takeoff and landing hubs of key venues and providing support for emergency services and security. Now, referring back to my last video, I do have some doubts on how many midnight aircraft they can have available for 2028. I've said they're bogged down in... The amount of aircraft they have promised to United Arab Emirates, getting involved in that deal with United and how big the New York City plan is. And there wasn't really much talk, only back in 2021, when they were pushing for this plan. But it is quite exciting. And you can't help but get so excited in this eVTOL space. Look, for over a year, we've been covering Archer and it just makes me so happy to see how far we're coming. We're seeing a lot more channels covering this at the moment. And you know what? Fair play to them. Because, look, if we all build on each other's information, everyone will succeed. So what does this involve? They'll host over 15 million visitors and be broadcast the billions. So really, this is the biggest way to advertise Archer as a brand. However, we're going to discuss the implications this means for Joby. And look, I'm not being bearish, but it's not as bad for Joby as many Archer investors think. Most people think this is the nail in the coffin for Joby when it comes to Los Angeles but I don't think so. So we've seen Adam Goldstein says, we want to transform the way people get around Los Angeles 
and leave legacy that shapes the future of transportation in America. There's no better time than to do that at 2028 Games. And look, we've more or less covered everything around the infrastructure and what the vertiports are going to look like. We know there's a transportation crisis in Los Angeles at the moment when it comes to infrastructure for the Olympics. But if you want to see all that, jump back to either the last video or the video we had a month ago about this Olympic Games. So, the chairperson and president, Casey Vassman, of the 2028 Olympics said, at the 2028 LA, they're building a platform for constant innovation and creativity, which is why they partnered with forward-thinking companies like Archer. Their vision is to fundamentally reimagine the Olympic and Paralympic Games experience, and its partnership represents an incredible opportunity to deliver something unprecedented, showcasing the best of what Los Angeles has to offer at the world stage. So this agreement also includes access to storytelling throughout NBC Universal's 2026 and 2028 Olympic Games coverage, including moments like the 2028 opening and closing ceremony in Los Angeles. And I agree, this is going to be a massive PR stunt. However, I just can't get my head around how they've said there is delays when it comes to FAA certification. And we believe they won't be certified until around 2027. That leaves one year to get all of this in place. That leaves one year to have all these vehicles ready for flying. However, at the moment, they have the manufacturing facility that is pumping out 10 by the end of the year. Even if they can 10x that in the following year, I'm just really doubtful that their vision back in 2021 will come to fruition in 2028. I think it's too short of a time frame now. Does that make me bearish? No, it doesn't. It's a massive PR stunt. Look, they said they'll be transporting fans. I believe that is partially true, but I think it'll be more or less an advertising flight. I couldn't see them transporting fans to and from. I can see maybe certain VIPs getting transported. And yes, we will see the likes of Team America and we'll see them at the opening and closing ceremony. But there's massive concerns I have around it. And I just want you to consider this before you just dive in and make silly decisions. It's not financial advice, but I am very sceptical at this sort of level now. We can see here over the month we've run up 87%. I've said it before, what goes up quickly comes down quickly. We've always said we are like sharks. We buy on the red days when there's blood in the water. When it's all going swimly and going green, we either do nothing or we take profit. I'm going to be honest with you. I, I've been called out by one of our key followers, Terry, today, saying we do know our investments, which is true. I do believe we have been more or less right about the direction of Arch and Joby over the last year. But he says our timing is poor. And I'm going to agree with him there. I sold out 20% under the pump up to 11.50. I could see it going up a little bit higher. However, at this sort of level, it's just sort of worrying me that, look, we had a mediocre earnings. There wasn't nothing that pulled up trees. People are getting excited about the pilot flights, but we have Joby pushing out footage of pilot transitions. Two S4 aircraft simultaneously flying in the air. Where Archer had the midnight running down the runway. This is a good partnership. However, we can see up in a month ago, we were calling for this. Because it's not something that has just came out of nowhere. 
just like the Palantir one, sometimes if you just look back at the history and what they have been saying, these things are coming to fruition now. However, what does this mean for Joby? So Joby came out today and said they've more or less expanded their marina manufacturing capabilities. So they've stated this new building will more than double their manufacturing footprint in Marina, California, when it's handed over to their team next month. With the fifth aircraft from their production line set to join the flight test program and their team already producing parts equivalent to one aircraft per month. Their sidestep approach to scaling manufacturing is paying off and securing them with the same head start in manufacturing that they have in certifying their aircraft. Now you guys are going to say the Covington Georgia factory is already up and running. However, if they're scaling out at one aircraft per month, that is 12 aircraft. And look, they already have these five aircraft, more or less, out. They're very, very close to FAA certification. I believe manufacturing will be ramped up by both companies as soon as they get certified. It's more or less the I's are dotted and the T's are crossed. The thing that worries me about Archer is there's a lot of PR going out at the moment, but at the same time, you're not seeing the action done in the places that it needs to be done. I would much prefer to see piloted midnight aircraft coming out and announce the Olympics in the owner's call. Why wait a week to all of a sudden announce the Olympics? It just really confuses me. Why do they not just get the piloted flights done prior to earnings. We've heard from Adam himself that the pilot flights will take place this week and we'll see footage of it. I don't doubt it. It probably will. But couldn't they have just, instead of pushing so hard on the PR, actually just tightened down on that side? Look, Archer are doing an amazing job. Every single Humpty Dumpty and their cousin is jumping into the stock at the moment. And this is what makes it very dangerous. Because if they don't achieve what they set out to achieve, like if you think about it, the Olympics is in 2028. This buzz is not going to last too long. People are not going to wait from 2026 to 2028 without any substantial sort of progress with the FAA. My concern is, yes, Archer may be the sponsor. However, in that press release, I haven't seen that Joby will not be allowed to fly in Los Angeles. So therefore, Joby actually may have more aircraft in Los Angeles. And I don't know about you, but I have never flown the helicopter. And if I wanted to fly in a helicopter and I had never seen one before and I seen it on the Olympics. To be fair, I don't care what brand of helicopter I fly on. And again, I don't think people will mind what version of a flying taxi they fly on. Yes, the midnight air taxi looks completely different to the S4. But if the S4 is actually running services rather than having to advertise on television, then people will use the S4 and they can scale and scale up. But I'm going to jump back to the studio and sort of have a rethink about it. Archer Joby just seemed to be the constant question I'm asking myself every single day. However, for me, at the moment, the safe bet for me is to add more Joby again with the profits I've taken from Archer. There's no point in me jumping back in at a higher price. Look, if it goes up higher without me and hits that $20 price target that we set all the way back in October, no problem. However, I still have stock in it. 
But I just think Joby has a massive runway too. And I think all three tail investors seem to like the flashness of Archer. But we can't hide from the fact Joby is getting things done. Let me know what you think about it and drop it in the comments. And tell me, do you prefer Archer or do you prefer Joby?